So for the drill, number one, degrees in a circle. Number two, how many radians in the complete circle, in the complete turn. Number three, define frequency. Number four, find x in that right angle triangle. You can use your calculators for this one. How do I get x? Do you remember how to do it? And if you do, do it. Just pause this and have a go if you're watching the video. Number five, again, there's a right angle triangle. Can you calculate what x is? Can you remember how to do it? If so, try it. Today is on this all sort of thing, so if you can't remember, well, that's the aim of today anyway. But see if you can. Again, I'll pause. After each question, see if you can do it. Number six, define a vector quantity and define a scalar quantity. The wording doesn't need to be exact, but there is a certain way we define those two, which highlights the difference between them, really. And last but not least, it's solve that equation. Okay, let's have a look then. So, the number one, the number of degrees in a circle, 360 degrees in a circle, that's an arbitrary figure that's been chosen, so we divide a complete turn into 360 divisions. Two pi radians in a complete revolution, and that's definition is more uh, in terms of the actual circle rather than an arbitrary amount, as we'll see. So two pi radians is a complete turn, and if we want to define frequency, then that's the number of cycles or number of turns, complete revolutions per second, measured in hertz. When one hertz is one cycle per second. So one complete revolution, if you're talking about things rotating per second, is one hertz. Number four, if I'm going to have to try and solve this, I need to remember Pythagoras. It's to do with Pythagoras. which applies to right angle triangles. And if you remember, it's a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b are the short sides and c is the hypotenuse. I'm after one of the short sides, so I need to rearrange this. So one of the short sides equals c squared minus b squared, taking the other short side over the other side effectively, then just put the numbers in. a, of course, is the square root of that. So it's going to be the square root of 9.82 squared minus 3.68 squared, whatever that is. And I can do that in one hit on the calculator. Remember Pythagoras' theorem. You might well be asked to use it. Number five involves these ratios, Sokotoa, sine, cosine, and tangent, which might ring some bells with you, but something we're looking at in a minute anyway. Sine is opposite over, hypo over hypotenuse, and if we look at this, if this is the angle we're given, then this side is opposite to the angle, so that's the opposite. And this side is always a hypotenuse. So it's this one we're after, sine, which because that involves the opposite and the hypotenuse. And so we remember that the sine of the angle is opposite over hypotenuse. That's what that little Aiden memoir, if you like, is telling us. So if I want the hypotenuse, I have to multiply both sides by h, then divide by sine theta. So the hypotenuse is the opposite side over the sine of theta. So it's 3.45 divided by the sine of 65 degrees. And if you do that on a calculator and you get a wrong answer, it's because you've done what? What's the area you could make in using the calculator in this little calculation? 
radians to degrees. Your calculator measures angles in either radians or degrees, so you need to check you're in degrees if your angle's in degrees, or radians if your angle's in radians. So just beware of that. Whenever you're measuring an angle, the first thing that should pop into your head when you're thinking about using the calculator is, am I in the right um, form? So we get 3.81 metres to three significant figures. Next one. Vector quantity, scalar quantity. A scalar has magnitude only. Think energy, 30 joules. Think time, 15 seconds. A vector has magnitude and direction. Think force. So if I want to represent a vector quantity, not only do I have to represent the size, the magnitude, but also the direction, which is often measured from this positive x-axis in an anti-clockwise direction. So I have to specify an angle of some sort. So if I've got this sort of vector idea, often I want to know well, what's the effect of this force in the horizontal direction? What's the horizontal component? What's the effect of this force in the vertical direction? What's the vertical component of that force? And when we're working with forces, we often do that. And hopefully you can see the horizontal effect of that force is that side of a right angle triangle. So the ideas of Pythagoras and sine, cosines and so on are often used with vectors. Last one, solve this equation where it's going to have to be expanded out, simplified, and then we get a value for x. So if we expand it out, we get this. And you may well have done it that way. And if you think of a different start point, look at it again. What could you have done instead of just immediately expanding out? It's worked, but is there another thing we could have done? Good, divide both sides by 3. If I divide both sides by 3, I get rid of the 3 here, and this becomes a 2. And then that just makes the expansion a little bit easier. So this sort of practicing these ideas of solving equations and expanding and all the rest of it, the more you do, the more you see little shortcuts like that. So if you wanted to carry on until you get the same answer using that method, that might be an idea. Okay, so I'll stop that there.